All right guys, well I've been doing a lot of trout fishing videos on my channel. I think the last seven or eight videos are all trout fishing because the ocean has been super rough and uh, honestly, I, I like trout fishing. Gets a nice change of pace. Um, ocean is still my favorite, but um, I've been doing a lot of trout fishing recently and it's been, uh, it's been fun. So anyways, today I'm gonna give you the top five variables that I like to consider when fishing for trout. Um, to try and figure out what the bite is. I've talked about in all of my videos, maybe not all, but most of my videos, that trout fishing more than any other, maybe salmon fishing as well, but trout fishing I think the most, um, it's like a puzzle you gotta put together. There's so many different variables to consider. One thing that's off, and oftentimes you won't catch fish or you just won't catch very many fish. So these are the five things that I like to consider. Before we even get started with that, I wanted to just say that I planned to film this video out in the water and it was a great video. I thought it was gonna be great, but when I got home, I checked my, uh, my footage and this is what I found. So, the video was great, but unfortunately, I missed a connection somewhere with the audio. I'm not sure if the port was not plugged in all the way or maybe the mic was dead, I'm not sure. So, all of my bulk of this video that I filmed out on the kayak had no audio, so that's why I'm doing it here. The good thing was, I'm not sure what happened, but there was audio for the second portion of my video, which is the actual fishing portion. So I will be getting to that at the end of this video. But first, let me give you my five variables. Number one is lake placement. So there's a lot of different places on a lake to fish. Um, just in general, a lot of lakes include dams, you know, inlets, outlets, and those are all places that I like to hit. Dams are most likely the deepest part of the lake. Inlets and outlets are places where fish will um, kind of congregate because there's more food there. And then the last one is points. So points are like where you see a point on land, oftentimes that point extends out into the underwater, into the lake. And that's also a good place for fish to kind of hide out, ambush prey. Sometimes there's like a little current break right there where bait fish are kind of getting pushed over the point. So all four of those are kind of places that I like to start and trying to figure out which one is best on that particular day in that particular lake. Sometimes you're fishing a really small lake and you can just kind of cover all the bases and you know figure out what's working, but other times maybe you're fishing a huge lake and there's no way you can cover it, especially in a kayak. So kind of narrowing it down, choosing a few to start with, and then figuring out which one is the best can really help you you know, target those fish and make sure you're in a fishable or fishy area is probably the number one thing to figure out because all of, you know, I'm gonna go over four more variables. All of those don't matter if you're not fishing where there's any fish. So um, yeah, that's the first thing I like to figure out. Oh, and one more thing. So a lot of the lakes that I'm fishing or I've been fishing recently are stocked lakes and majority of those lakes, the majority of the fish are caught within the first week that they're planted and even the first couple days usually. So especially if the lake has recently been planting, been planted, trying to figure out where they plant them. Oftentimes it's kind of hard to figure out because they don't really want to tell you, but if you can figure out where they planted them, those fish often don't move very far for at least the first couple of days. So if you can figure out where that is, head straight to that spot and you'll honestly you probably have your best chance at finding the fish, no matter what the area of the lake is. Okay, so once you figure out where the fish are, here's four more. So the first one is water depth. So um, certain lakes are deeper than others and certain fish or super fisheries fish different than others. So sometimes the trout are on the top, sometimes they're in the middle, sometimes they're on the bottom. They could be down as far as like 30, 40, 50 feet sometimes. And sometimes they're up as close as, you know, feeding right on the surface. So um, in my videos recently, I've been catching a lot on the top line, which means they're probably in the top like five feet of the water column. Um, but other times I fished a video or filmed a video not too long ago. I think it was like a camping video, camping and fishing video, where I was catching them on the downrigger. I was down like 30 feet. So um, it just depends on the fishery, how the fish is doing. A lot of time, I think a lot of it has to do with water temperature um, and just you know how the fish are acting that day. So some days are different than others. Recently, like I said, I've been catching a lot on the top line, but you know sometimes they're down a little bit deeper. Actually, in one of my recent videos. I brought out a downrigger to my local lake where I've been catching them all on top line and I happen to catch one on the bottom. So sometimes you just gotta figure it out. Um, but yeah, that's the first variable. Number two, or actually number three, if you include lake positioning. Um, number three is lure type. So there's a ton of different trout lures. Actually, I'll show you a couple here. Got one here, 
This is one of my new favorites. This is a little fire tiger Rapala jerk bait. They got another one here. This is a little crappie jig. I don't know if it's gonna focus, but anyways. So I've been catching them on grubs, um, jerk baits. There's all kinds of spinners, spoons, power bait, all that kind of stuff. They're all very effective. I caught fish on all of those. So for example, in one of my recent videos, I was fishing top line, the Rapalas, which worked actually the day before. I was at the same lake two days in a row. But for whatever reason, this day, it wasn't working. Switched it up, figured out that they were biting on grubs, and uh, then I was able to catch more fish, which I'll talk about a little bit more later. But you know, figuring out which type of lure is super critical. Sometimes they're feeding on jerk baits because there's a lot of minnows you know, in the area, and it just matches what they're doing. Sometimes that's not the case, and maybe they're fighting, or, uh, biting on grubs because they're eating more you know, natural forage like worms and stuff like that. So anyways, figuring out the lure type is one thing. And then the next thing, which is number four on the list, is lure color. So once again, one of these, you know, this little grub right here, this is a white crappie grub. And this one, this fire tiger lure, or fire tiger rapala, is totally different. It's green, orange, yellow, you know, Super unnatural, actually, in my opinion, but I don't know, for whatever reason, it's been working for me. So anyways, figuring out the lure color is another big factor. So one thing that I like to think about with world lure color is when it's super clear, go with more natural color presentations. So like, I've also been using a black and white Rapala, which is more natural to like a little shad or just any kind of little minnow, honestly. Um, so when the water's a lot clearer, I find that that lure works better. When the water's a little more stained, or maybe the, um, you know, the weather's a little more overcast, so there's less light, that's when I go with the um, different colors, the brighter colors, because they're gonna stand out a lot better. And when, it's, you know, when the water is a lot dirtier, obviously the fish can't see as far. So if they're, um, you know, your natural color swim bait is a little more camouflage, they're not even gonna see it, you're not gonna be able to catch them. But if you have your brighter color, like the yellow, orange, like on this thing, like, dude, I can see this thing from a mile away. So um, that's really helpful when the water is a little bit dirtier. Uh, okay, and then the last thing is lure speed or you know your speed. So if you're fishing from a bank, maybe that doesn't matter as much. You know, if you're fishing bait, maybe you're fishing power bait, it's just sitting there, there's no speed involved. But you might be fishing lures, maybe spoons, spinners, or even repulse like this you can cast from shore. Um, retrieval speed is also really important. Um, and I've talked about this in a, in a previous video when I'm trolling for trout, I'll kind of watch the action of the rod or even dip the lure into the water and troll at a certain speed so I know exactly what that lure looks like at that speed. That way when it's back there, and obviously you can't see it when you're fishing it, it's back, you know, whatever, 50, 100, 150 feet. Um, you can know exactly what your lure is doing when you're going that speed, even though you can't see the lure because you have that little mental note from before. Every lure reacts differently to different speeds. So sometimes like these are Paula's, the jointed Rapalas, I think they work a little bit better at lower speeds, whereas the unjointed Rapalas work a little bit better at higher speeds. That's just what I've noticed recently, at least. So, and then spoons, spinners, they're all different. So, um, there's a few different things. If you wanna check my last couple of videos, uh, I talked a little bit more about that, but just noting what speed is working, that's a, one of the hardest things, actually, because usually when you catch a fish, you're not focused on anything else other than catching the fish. But if you can, try and make a mental note of like what tro trolling speed you're using when that fish hit, um, and then you can replicate that. And then another thing I also talked about in another video was when uh, a fish, maybe you get a short strike, um, a lot of times there's a couple things I, that I like to think about when that happens. Maybe the color is slightly off of the lure. Usually you have the right kind of lure, but maybe the color is slightly off or maybe your speed is slightly off. So maybe I'll try trolling a little bit slower or even maybe a little bit faster, just depends. Um, and then if, you know, also you can try uh, mixing up the colors to try and fix that. So anyways, now we're gonna get into fishing, but that's, those are the five things I like to consider. Lake placement, water depth, lure type, lure color, and lastly, lure speed or you know, your trolling speed. So those are the five things I like to consider. And uh, one thing that I also mentioned in the video that didn't get cut through because of the audio is, you know, ch keep changing it up. A lot of times people, I, I don't know, people are just get lazy when they're fishing. 
and then just tie whatever worked before, leave it on there for hours and hours and you know, it's not working. So in my opinion, every day is different. You gotta figure out what's working that day. So yeah, maybe you wanna start with what was working before, but if that's not working, keep switching up. Maybe try a different part of the lake, try a different lure, whatever. It's always a puzzle to figure out. Let me set this scene for my fishing portion of this video because audio is terrible or it wasn't terrible, it wasn't even, it was non-existent. Um, let me set the scene. So it was me, my buddy Ensei in kayaks, and then Fisherman's Life and Philosophy D were in a boat. We all hit this lake super early. Um, I think we got on the water at like 7.30, something like that. And we're headed out to try and fish for a few things. They have the cut bow trout, which I caught in a previous video. And then there was also some lightning trout in the lake, which we were hoping to catch. Um, and we trolled along for like, like I said, we got on the water at 7.30. I think we, the video, I'll pick up the video at like maybe 12.30, something like that. So five hours of basically nothing. I got a couple of hits, short strikes. Um, and I think Ed's caught one. But for me, it was nothing for the first five hours, which is what I was talking about a little bit in the five tips is, you know, you just gotta keep switching it up, keep rotating things, figuring it out, maybe, you know, whatever, something's off, you gotta just figure it out. So anyways, that's where we'll pick up this video. Five hours in, here we go. Uh, yeah, I guess we gotta do a round or two now. I don't know, this feels kinda small. Yeah, I guess so. I can't complain at this point. Not yet. Not yet. I don't really like netting on this side, but... Oh well. No skunk! Man, that took way too long. It's uh, 12.30. I was in, I thought I was gonna break my skunk streak or my whatever catching streak, but uh, I guess I'm just good for now. Even the one that I caught, it looks like it's like been in a net already. Like all the scales are knocked off. I know. Oh, I'm on. Oh. What color is that one? The same one, the, the, the uh, yeah. Feels like a better one. Maybe this is a lightning. Yeah, it's a lightning. Wow. This is, we've had to work so hard for him today. We almost quit too. But NC started paddling back here and I couldn't let him, you know, I couldn't tell him that I wanted to quit before he did, so. <laughs> Plus Matt and Danny went back there. I didn't want to let them stay longer than us either. It was like a decent one. All right, guys, the battery's dead on all my cameras. Oh, no, 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 this way. Oh, it's only got one hook in him. Barely hooked, barely hooked. All right, we gotta get him, we gotta get him. Got him. Oh. Oh man, worked so hard for this one, or these two today. We really had to grind it out. Like I was saying, uh, I was actually headed towards the launch and uh, my beanie. I saw Ense angling back towards the main lake and I said, oh, I can't let him, I can't quit before he does. The same thing with uh, Daniel and Matt's, wherever they ended up. I thought they were gonna quit around. We both said, oh, we're gonna quit around like 12 or one, you know, and then, uh, yeah, it's already 
two o'clock now and we're, we're all still out here. So we're all grinding it out as fishermen. That's what we do. Here's the lure that did him in. Again, the fiery tiger. If you haven't seen my recent videos, I've been doing really well with this uh, lure. So if you don't have it in your box, get it now. I just added it to my box this past, uh, actually less than a week ago, I added this to my box. And uh, yeah, I've been catching a lot of fish on it. Probably this exact lure, like this very one, probably caught me like, I don't know, I lost count. At least five fish already. So anyways, there's that. Now let me show you the fish here. Well, the one thing that I didn't mention earlier as one of the keys to success is just grinding it out. Keep changing stuff up, keep trying, because eventually it will pay off. And there is, there's our payoff today. It's a little bit bigger than the first one. A nice little one, another cut bow. Nice, pretty full tail. It's got a little, little scar in there, but pretty full, fought pretty good, a lot harder than the first one. So anyways, I'm glad I could end this video on a little bit of a high note. Get paid off for all of our hard work today. Make sure you check out Ense on Instagram. He was out here all day with me, still out here, just grinding it out. We like to, we push each other to fish pretty hard. We, we both would fish hard already, but then when we get together, we fish even harder. So anyways, I like fishing with him. Check him out. And also check out Philosophy D, Fisherman's Life. I don't know where they ended up, but they were out here all day with me as well, um, grinding out. I'm not sure if they, I don't know, it's been a tough day. I'm not sure if they caught any or if they're gonna make a video from today, but check them out regardless. They got a lot of great content on both of their channels. Um, but yeah, there we go. That's our finished product, the reward for today's hard work. Oh, hey, you're back. Didn't know the fishing part was over. By the way, got my merch here. It's for sale, shameless plug. But anyways, thank you guys for watching this video. I know it wasn't exactly how I ho hoped it would turn out, but hopefully you guys learned a little bit about trout fishing and I hope it'll help you catch a few more trout on your next adventure. Um, if you have any questions about the five things I talk about or anything, please leave a comment below. I'm by no means a trout expert, but I'm doing pretty well, you know, in my last few videos, which um, leads me to the next point. I'm in the middle of a 12 day fishing challenge. If you're watching this video as it's posted, you're probably aware of it already, but if you're watching it maybe later, you know, you found this video because you're trying to catch some trout, Check out all my recent videos. I think the last six or seven were all trout fishing, so you can learn a little bit from all seven of those. Um, I will leave a link in the description for the full playlist from all 12 videos. And uh, yeah, we'll see you tomorrow. Thanks for watching.